It started out on a positive note. 2013 began with the Israeli Prime Minister winning a third term in office. The elections proving again that there is no current leadership alternative to Benjamin Netanyahu. Even though it took a while, he succeeded in forming a coalition and in doing so claimed the record for longest serving Israeli Prime Minister. Just a short while after his government inauguration, 2013 continued to be good to Netanyahu. After years of public tension, a historic visit by U.S. President Barack Obama set the stage for the two leaders to bury the hatchet. Obama's three-day trip was a bombastic display of friendship full of grand declarations by both leaders, hailing the unprecedented levels of cooperation between the two allies. The United States is proud to stand with you as your strongest ally and your greatest friend. Netanyahu also made a point in 2013 of strengthening relationships with other world powers, embarking on a mega visit to China and demonstrating Israel's respect for Russian President Vladimir Putin. This is as far as my Chinese goes today. 2013 was looking so promising, but then came the turning point of Netanyahu's year. Iran's presidential election ushered in Hassan Rouhani, who was introduced to the world as a relative moderate. Little did Israel know his politics would bring about a dramatic geostrategic shift in the Middle East. Iran seeks to resolve not problems, not to create them. Under Rouhani's leadership, the new Iranian administration embarked on an impressive diplomatic campaign to counter its international isolation. The second half of Netanyahu's year has been dedicated to coping with Rouhani's so-called charm offensive, warning the world not to be fooled by his smiles and to instead judge him by Iran's actions. Rouhani is a wolf in sheep's clothing, a wolf who thinks he can pull the eyes, the wool over the eyes of the international community. The six world powers did not accept Netanyahu's apocalyptic warnings. And in November, Tehran signed an interim nuclear deal with world powers. The agreement was widely praised as an historic achievement. But Netanyahu, he had an utterly different opinion and did his best to make it known. What was concluded in uh, Geneva last night is not a historic agreement. It's a historic mistake. Looking back at 2013, one other issue stands out, perhaps above every other, the renewed Israeli-Palestinian negotiations. No foreign official spent as many hours with Netanyahu this year as U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. His unprecedented personal dedication to the peace process brought him to the region more than 10 times, every visit including numerous meetings with Netanyahu. It's been constructive. Uh, it's always uh, complicated. And of course, Netanyahu had his own share of scandals in 2013. There was Ice Cream Gate, which exposed Israel's first family's immense taste and budget for pistachio ice cream. Netanyahu was also slammed for his flying habits, spending more than $100,000 to install a special bed for a four-hour flight to attend Margaret Thatcher's funeral. And the most recent controversy centered around the prime minister's housing expenses. His extravagant taste made front-page headlines in newspapers throughout the country. So what does 2014 have in the stars for Netanyahu? In the turbulent Middle East, one should be cautious with early predictions. But one can assume Iran and the peace process will continue to occupy most of the Israeli prime minister's time. In 2013, he didn't make it to the history books on these two. Maybe the next year will be more successful.